Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded. We're here at Askar and as you can see I've already done a little bit of siege equipment building and bombarding of the walls. Thankfully I've been pretty left alone here and uh, we do have a party of 77 as well as Ialis's army. Now we do have to be a little bit careful about that because he could very easily combine all of these forces together and then have a force that is capable of potentially defeating us. So we do need to be a little bit careful about that. But before we do anything here, I do want to go into my party screen right now and just upgrade 15 troops, no less. That's actually pretty good. As you can see, the game that I'm currently running here is lagging a little bit just because of how much stuff there is to... Uh, actually deal with here there's just so many different uh unit types that i have in my army at the moment anyway let's uh, level up some skirmishers right there as well i'm just going to set that as the upgrade target and then we're also going to go into my character screen because i just leveled up my engineering to 75 so let's just take a quick look rams and siege towers have 33 percent more hit points and 25 percent increased build speed for town projects. That's only if you're the governor, of course, and I don't have a governor. Well, technically, I'm not the governor of my own town, so that makes no difference. However, ranged troops have 50% more ammunition when besieging and 50% increased build speed for castle projects. Okay. Well, here, in this case, I would probably say that military planner is probably better because towns... I'm more than likely not going to be the governor of these towns. I'm more than likely just going to give the governorship to someone that is actually from the same culture. It seems to make more sense to do that. And I'm more than likely going to be the governor for the castle projects. So I'm thinking we'll probably do this one, even though the primary benefit for this, which is ranged troops having 50% more ammunition, I don't think that's actually any good. I think that that is kind of useless, but... We're going to take it nevertheless just for the 50% increased speed for castle projects. That seems like a pretty good one, to be honest. I mean, 50% extra speed? That's actually crazy if you think about it. But anyway, let's go into this siege and see what we can do. Now, bear in mind, this is during nighttime, so obviously... Uh, oh yeah, I should have changed my weapon as well. I'm a bit of an imbecile, but there's only 28 units here, so I suppose it's not that big a deal, but still... I definitely should have changed my weapon over to my mace that we created in a previous episode. But uh, yeah, I'm actually wondering whether I should just go zoom zoom here and just eliminate these guys super fast. Ooh, it actually... Oh, wait a minute. My ammunition actually counts for myself as well. That perk actually counts for myself. That's pretty interesting and might... Mm, that, that might be kind of useful then. Got him. Okay. Oh, no. Don't get killed by the rock. Oh, no. Dwayne, leave me alone, Dwayne. You are not here to murder me. Thank you. Nice. Nice headshots. Take him down. And I believe we're pretty good, actually. I believe we're pretty good for the most part. Uh, I just don't want to get killed by a rock if I can help it. Is that an enemy over there? Nope. Ah, there's one. Well, he's probably going to get taken down, isn't he? All right, let's go zoom zoom and let's get the victory. There we go, because now we're going to have to deal with Ialis's army and that might be a little bit tricky dependent on if we're able to get him by himself or whether he actually gets the nearby units to help him out but we've thankfully taken Askar back this is obviously one of the best places to buy horses from so we obviously want to have this you know uh, pretty much available to us all the time okay so yeah of course we're going to be showing mercy there basically is no other reason why we would not do that and uh, I can actually claim this which I think I might do I think I might do this. Should I do it? Yeah, why not? Let's claim it for ourselves. This is actually kind of amazing. That's the reason why the diplomacy mod that I have installed at the moment is so incredibly nice. It really does make a huge difference. And, oh yeah, I actually forgot to let you know about the whole loyalty thing. Okay, so, you know in a previous episode how I took a perk called 
parade. Well, maybe if you didn't see that particular episode, then I'm going to explain it now. But parade is basically this really high-level perk. I think it's in... Is it in charm? Or is it in trade? Mm, seems to be in charm, I believe. Yes, as you can see. So, when you visit your own settlements, they get a plus 5 loyalty bonus once per day. Okay, so now here's the thing. The main way that I was able to increase my loyalty in my other city was to just wait there for some time. And every single day, the loyalty would be increased by 5. So even if we had, you know, own owner culture, negative 3, looted villages, and any problems whatsoever, the parade bonus would actually negate all of that and I would actually be gaining about six or seven loyalty per day which is absolutely amazing and that was the reason why I was able to actually get to 86 loyalty in the end which is pretty good if I do say so myself anyway these guys uh, don't really care about this too much prosperity change don't really care about that garrison barracks also don't care about that so we're just going to stop all of that and we're just going to go for about 10k right there and then we're just going to be building some food production because food is obviously extremely important and I'm going to go for a militia increase because we need militia as you can see right there it seems like militia is being a bit slow but maybe I'm thinking loyalty as well hmm it's a bit problematic isn't it on the one hand you really want to keep that loyalty bonus but on the other hand you really want militia to help out your town in every single respect but anyway let's just see what we can do here maybe I can sell a couple of shields get some uh, get some cash Oh yeah, we can actually sell that guy's bow for like 128,000 if we wanted to. So yeah, as I said in the previous episode, that's a really, really good way of making some initial starter cash. If you're wanting to make a caravan empire or something along those lines, you're going to be able to do that very, very easily. So if you want to, go for it, you know? I mean, I think that, that that's actually kind of cool because on the one hand, if you're a bandit kind of makes sense because you end up losing a huge amount of relation and you're kind of like an evil doer but on the other hand if you're just wanting a well pretty big cash injection then you can do that too which is pretty nice i gotta say anyway let's just get some a little bit of food here and let's get some beer as well and then let's just move on there we go and now we have yalus hello there sir would you like to fight uh, actually, I should really deal with the improved garrison mod, shouldn't I? Alright, so I've taken a look at the garrison right here, and as you can see, there's actually a bunch of really high-tier units in here. I think that's primarily because um, my uh, my party member, Sylvind, also my wife, obviously, or Byron's wife, shall we say, she has put in a bunch of high-tier units here, and that's obviously something that we... I mean, on the one hand, we really do appreciate it, but on the other hand, we really don't, because we really don't want to have these units go to waste if it gets taken or something like that. So I'm just going to take out a couple, just so that I save the highest tier units, and then if they do get, you know, if it does get taken for some reason or another, then at least we've kept those units, and we're not going to just end up losing them randomly. Oh, it seems like we made peace! Wow, that was actually spectacular. That is actually one of the best possible things that could have happened in that exact moment. Because now we have all the time in the world to do whatever we want with Askar. And we really don't have, we don't have to worry about it at all. It's actually kind of crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, let's have a look and see whether I... Oh, oh, oh what, is a, what is a pike, actually? Can I, can I create a couch lancing pike? I don't think so, right? No. No, no, these are just literal things that you can use either off your mount or... Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure if you can use it off your mount or not. I mean, on your mount, shall we say. But yeah, two-handed polearm might be quite fun because I think we have a number of really, really good ones. But these ones are obviously not couch lanceable, which is kind of unfortunate because I kind of have a fun time doing the couch lancing. Uh, these are the things that determine whether they're couch lanceable. We could do this. We could do this one. What is that? 167 reach? Kind of seems fun. And what about this one? Let's go for that. There we go. 204 reach. That seems pretty nice. It's couch lanceable. And it is a knightly lance head. Seems nice. 
39 piercing damage. I have no idea whether that's any good, by the way, but uh, hopefully it is. Let's just uh, increase the size of it. Let's increase the size there. There we go. And then we obviously have this, which increases nothing about it whatsoever. Yeah, increases the length a little bit, so we'll just increase that a little bit more. And there we go. Okay, so how is this? Is this bad? Is this good? I have no idea, but we'll do it. Okay, we lost a bit of thrusting speed, but I don't really care about that. So we're just going to call this, um... Is this the ultimate thruster? There we go. Ultimate thruster. Sounds good to me. There we go. I have no idea whether it's going to be any good, but we're, we're going to compare it against the one that we currently have. This is the thing that he dropped, by the way, when we murdered him. I mean, that's basically what we did, but we executed him. And uh, let's have a look. Bash Your Face Thanks is still there, thankfully. Didn't sell that by mistake. Okay, where is it? Uh, there's Battle Wizard. Battle Thruster. Where's Ultimate Thruster? There it is. Okay, so... It has less damage, but it has more length, better handling. The thrust speed is pretty good as well. Might be kind of good. All right, let's try it out. It's a very small difference. So we'll try it out, but I don't think there's actually anything else we can even do here, to be honest, because we're not at war against anyone, which is, again, a big, big infuriation source for me because I really like fighting in these vassal battles and seeing what kind of strategy the enemy is going to use but the Azurai of course wanted to make peace with us very very quickly because we've taken Jamier Castle from them we took Medini Castle from them and I believe we probably would have been able to take some others as well because we had Hashan running around in a really large army and I'm pretty sure he would be fine you know, I'm pretty sure he would be fine to do whatever he wanted to do. And he was on his way, I think, to besiege Iakis. Because obviously that's really close by as well. There it is. So it would be nice if we could maybe do something about that again. But it's highly unlikely that they're going to make peace once more. But anyway, as you could see, this is going to take 64 days to be built, unfortunately. But you can see already that our loyalty has skyrocketed up. It used to be like 26, didn't it? Or something like that. But generally, because of the parade bonus that we have thanks to the charm skill it is making all the difference in the world and i'd highly recommend it if you are having problems with loyalty this is basically the brain dead way of gaining loyalty if it works for me it's going to work for you that is for sure anyway i think what we're going to do if this tournament is still around right now i'm going to enter the tournament and we'll see how we do uh because it's been a while since we've actually done one and it might be... Oh, wow. This is a, th a free-for-all if ever I saw one. This is going to be kind of interesting. Okay. Well, I think we'll be okay. I mean, we're pretty heavily armored at the moment. No. Thank you. I have to be a bit careful here. I mean, on the one hand, I would like to get into range of, of enemies. But on the other hand, uh, they're a bit scary. Is that Sylvan? Oh, I'm so sorry, Sylvan. I seem to be murdering you. My bad. Blue team. I seem to have gotten myself in a bit of a spot of bother here, but no such luck for them. Thank you. There we are. Okay, I want to pick up some ranged weapons, actually. I feel like picking up. Oh, hello there. Throwing daggers? No. Are these literal throwing daggers? No. Forget that. Thank you very much. I don't want throwing daggers. Oh, I'll pick up some javelins, maybe. Javelins are quite fun to use. But, uh... Yeah... Throwing daggers, not so much. Not unless I'm playing like a thief character or something like that. But even then, throwing daggers are not going to be the most effective thing ever. Jump and slash. Oh, yes. Nice. Take him off his mount. Yes, there we go. Easy. Wow. The Okay, the red team completely survived through the entirety of that round. That is actually kind of rare. Usually that doesn't happen. And now we're all up against each other. I should have just let all of them fight it out and then just take on the victor, shouldn't I? Oh, that was a that was a cheap shot if ever I saw one. Wow. Never mind though. 
That was an easy victory for us, that's for sure. Okay, let's have a look. Sylvan's definitely going to get through. I mean, we can 100% say that she's more than likely going to win, right? Yeah? I think so. I don't think we really need to worry about her too much. She usually will have this in the bag. The next round will be in the bag for her. I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Shall we spectate how she does up against Bothero the Smith? I'm going to actually do that. Let's watch the round and see what happens. This is something that I don't usually do, but because it is our in-game wife doing a little bit of action here, we should probably take a look and see how she does. I'm, sh I'm assuming she's going to kill him in probably within the next 20 seconds. Okay, if she, if she loses, that's going to be absolutely hilarious. Oh, nice hit. Okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> do you see that? That is actually hilarious. Is that Bannerlord AI or is that the, the AI mod that I have installed that is making them do that weird stuff? And I cannot believe that she lost. I really cannot believe that she lost. That is super sad, actually. I would have been really happy to duel her in, in the final round. But, okay. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? That's how it goes. All right, let's do this. Ah. Pothero, I will avenge my wife. You imbecile. Okay, I'm gonna just do a nice little shield bash right there and take him down. There we go. Shield bash for the win. And there it is. Nice. Okay. Now, obviously, I personally don't care about the cash or anything like that, but it's just a huge amount of fun to go into these kinds of situations. Um, yeah, Sylvan actually needs some more units by the looks of things. So I'm thinking what we'll do is I'm actually going to go into the garrison here and I will take out a bunch of high tier troops. Uh, let's just take out a bunch of those. There we go. And then we'll just give her a bunch and then I'll just put in whatever I have that is spare. And then that will be good. So let's just see. What did I start taking? Uh, around this this level, I think. Okay. Oh, she. Oh, what? She already has way too many. Oh no. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, she has way too many recruits. That's the problem. Okay, let's give her a bunch of these. There we are. Okay, I'm over my troop limit, but that is not a big deal. Now we've given her a good amount. That's nice. And now we can place these back in the garrison. There we are. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. Uh, let's just level these guys up while we have the opportunity. Put the recruits in there. They're going to level up over time as well. Tier 3, Tier 4 units. And... Uh, are we still? Are we good? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're perfectly fine. We're perfectly fine with that. Alright, so let's just move on. Don't really want a massive army. I'd like about 300 in, in there. And as you can see, we have 298, so that's pretty nice. And otherwise... Let's take a look at the, the Diplomacy screen in just a second. I think I have a perk. Yes, I do. Steward skill. All right. Morale bonus from having diverse food is doubled. Okay, so obviously morale is pretty important, but at the moment we have a pretty decent amount of it, so I don't think that there's really any need for anything else. And reduce food consumption of garrisons during siege by 10%, or we have the other one, which is cost of upgrading units is decreased by 10%. And reduce food consumption of parties during siege by 10%. Ah, yeah, I'm going to take the parties, I suppose. Seems like a good idea. Because we're more than likely not going to be defending that much. We're more than likely going to be attacking much more often. So I'm thinking we'll probably do that. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the diplomacy here. Because we obviously want to try and find the next faction that we will be declaring war against. And it looks to me like we don't have... Oh, we have support against the Azurai. That's actually kind of hilarious. Are they... They're not paying us anything. So it seems like we came to an agreement. Just a mutual agreement, I suppose. That's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Okay. Yeah, it seems like the Azurai are the only people that we can do battle with. I'm really kind of a bit weirded out by this because... How much combat strength do they have? They have 3,000. Okay, ah, yes. It's because of the war exhaustion. Okay, yeah, it's because of the war exhaustion. So even if there is a massive amount of support for the war, that still doesn't make any difference because the war exhaustion is going to kick in 
shortly after the war actually begins, and then we are just going to mutually agree that both sides are tired of fighting, and then they're going to make peace again without anyone, you know, being the victor, you know, quote-unquote, because obviously then, at that point, there's not going to be any kind of benefit to either side, so no one is going to be pledging a tribute to the other one. So that's kind of sad, but... I can't really do much about that, unfortunately. And as you've seen, there aren't any other factions that have any support whatsoever for any kind of war action to be taken. So I'm thinking we'll just wait for a couple of days. And then we'll see what happens. Because if we can actually get a wonderful war declaration against someone like... Let's have a look here. Who's close? I'm thinking these guys. Western Empire. Western Empire would be preferable. You can see here that there are 0% people wanting uh, wanting an attack against them. Which is, well, i got to say, kind of strange. They are pretty close to us. And that's it. So it seems to me like they are going to have to be the ones that we will attack next. But we need some support from the other people. So in my opinion... I'm going to end this episode of here. I don't really want to, to be honest, because I actually want to play more. But there's not much for me to do, you see. Basically, all I am going to do in my off-screen time here is I'm literally just going to wait here, here at uh, wait here at Askar and uh, let my loyalty get boosted up by my parade skill. And that's it. Until there is a uh, little bit of reduction in the war exhaustion with the Azurai, because it's currently 75 to 82. And then we'll see what we can do about declaring war against them once again. And then maybe we'll be able to take Nikrish or uh, maybe Iakis or something like that. That would be pretty cool. But um, yeah, sometimes the game just does not give you or give me in this situation a positive outcome with which to uh, spend it doing activities. There's basically nothing I can do. There's, there's nothing I can do unless I cause war against the Western Empire. I don't have to take a vote. I could cause a war against them just by attacking them, but I'm not entirely sure if the war exhaustion is going to carry over. It doesn't. Aha. But they are quite strong, as you can see right here, so it might not even be in our best interest to do that, to be honest. But I'm going to think about it over the time uh, that I'm waiting here, and we'll see how we do uh, going forward. But if you have any suggestions about who you think we should attack, well, here's the overview of the map. By all means, let me know your suggestions in the comments, and then I'll see what I can do. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.